this is Pastor Lyle and welcome to Daily Renewal. My question for you today, are you praying enough? What a question. There's a lot of people that when you think about that particular question, you feel guilty because you probably you think you should probably have a better prayer life. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. How can you develop a more effective prayer life? Um, the first thing that I want to mention, uh, we're going to go to Matthew 6, is our motives in prayer. Jesus was pretty clear in Matthew 6, uh, starting in verse 5, it says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, uh, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in se the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Now, unfortunately, uh, I've been in church long enough to know I've seen many people that are very good at being seen in their prayer life. Uh, a lot of people have very repetitive prayers. A lot of people, in all honesty, that probably do this. And, uh, and, and, and really, I guess what I'm trying to say here is, is we need to be very careful to check our motives on why we're praying and, and who we're praying in front of. Are we doing this to impress people? Or are we actually doing this um, to connect with God? Because let's not forget, what prayer is, is prayer is communication with God. And God wants to communicate with us. In fact, God wants to communicate with us on a more regular basis than what we normally do. So I want to talk a little bit about that. There's two things that, uh, that I, I want to kind of focus on today. And the first one um, we find in uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul talking to the church in Thessalonica. In verse 16, he says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Well, that can set the bar pretty high. It says, without, pray without ceasing. Well, if your idea of prayer is to be on your knees with your eyes closed, your hands clasped, and your head bowed, you're going to have a hard time doing anything else in this life other than, other than that. Um, I don't think that Paul was necessarily talking about that kind of prayer when, uh, when he was speaking. Now, Jesus also said in Matthew, when he talked about it, he talked about going into your room, but there was also times where Jesus prayed in public. There was things he prayed for. So what I believe he was, he was referring to is, number one, our motive, uh, but number two, making sure that there is a communication, a constant communication with God, and sometimes we have to draw ourselves away to do that. Now, in praying unceasingly, one of the things that I've realized uh, in my walk with God is, is there's times during the day where, where I might just be doing something and all of a sudden God comes to my mind. Something either he's done or I'm just aware of his presence. And if you want to see your, your prayer life increase, my first suggestion is to you uh, is that you would acknowledge that he's there. Often, I'll be somewhere and I, I'll just stop everything. I might not be able to retreat into my room. And I don't have to, to stop everything and just be thankful to him. And even tell him, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes I'll be just thankful that, that he's doing great things in my life. Thankful that he loves me as much as he does. Thankful that he's got a plan for me. Thankful that I get to be a part of his plan, even more importantly. If you want to see your increase, uh, increase in your prayer life, there needs to be an increase in your communication. Daniel, uh, in one portion, uh, Daniel 6.10, it talks about the fact that Daniel prayed three times a day. Um, there's lots of things even in our modern technology. You can set your phone alarm, all these things. If you wanted to actually set aside times during the day where, where, where you can stop and, and, and just set aside some time to, to be thankful, to think about it. But for our prayer life to increase, our communication has to increase. And God is waiting to communicate with you. The more you do that, the more you will get to know him. The second part of this that I want to talk about is actually found in Ephesians. And this is the portion where Paul is talking about the, the armor of God. And, and as he talks about the armor of God, he ends it 
that particular portion talking in verse 18 of chapter 6, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So he's talking about praying for all the saints. And then he says, and for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. What Paul's doing here is he's saying, pray for me, pray for the saints, but he's asking for prayer. If there's ever a time where I think I've felt guilty about prayer is when, for instance, have you ever had this happen to you? Somebody comes up to you and says, will you pray for me? And of course, like a good brother, you say, of course I'll pray for you, brother. And then you part ways and three days later, you see that brother or you see that sister and it comes to you that you said you were going to pray for them, but you didn't. You ever had that happen? Well, let me tell you, one of the key little things that I do to, uh, to be a man of my word, because let's, for, let's remember, if you say you're going to pray for somebody and you don't, that's an integrity problem. That, you know, that opens up another, another issue. So what I do is if somebody asks me to pray for them, I will usually stop everything I'm doing and say, okay, let's do it right now. It shows the person that you are serious about praying for them, that they are important enough in your life that you're willing to take the time out to do it. And for some people, that is a big deal. They may not realize it at first, but when you stop and take the time to say, yes, let's do it now, it can make a big difference in someone's life. But if you can't do that, I'll tell you another thing that I do. I make it a resolution of sorts or a commitment that when somebody asks me to pray for them, if I can't do that immediately, then what I do is as soon as I part from that person, I find a place by myself, whether it's in my car or in a bathroom at a restaurant, wherever it is, I make it top priority before I do anything else. I get by myself and I pray for that person. That way I can be a man of my word. And, uh, and that way I, I am actually, I'm, I'm praying for them. It's important. And it takes away the guilt of me realizing that, yeah, you know, I said I would and I just forgot. I don't want to be somebody that, uh, that has my will come into play over top of helping somebody else when the Lord directs. So I hope these, th these tips helped you today. Uh, I just want to remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. So just, uh, I just ask you to... Uh, to um, Look at all those things and like where you need to like and make comments below. We're doing this to try to help people. So I pray you have a blessed day. God bless you.